and try it again and nothing all right so this guy here seemed to be the problem i had to change this back to um 124 from 123 i'm guessing there was some kind of range problem there i changed the player x to one so they are uh, the same uh, distance from either side of the screen and this should be working now. Yep So as you can see now the ball bounces um, off the opponent palette. Uh, we can't do anything with it, but there we go um, Cool, so let's do the same thing for the player now so let's go into the update and um, put a function here player bounce and this will be pretty much the same um, as the opponent bounce function we just created so let's just copy that and change this to player and change this to player as well everything to player uh, there player player and last one player okay now we should be able to nope um, that's probably just a typo um, player X player t there you go so cool now we should be able to return the ball nope uh, let's see what we're doing um, let's try changing this because maybe they got it wrong uh, no that's not it um, I'm guessing that it's the same problem again uh, two can we return it yeah there we go um, actually, I don't know what the problem with that is, but I'm just going to leave it at that. Maybe I'll look into it later. Uh, you can see that we can go off the screen, so let's fix that so we have boundaries. So let's go into update and player uh, bounds. Now let's go into the player tab, function player bounce, and let's say that if player y is more than 128, so if it goes off the screen, um, then We want to set the player y to um, 128. So I'm guessing that this will actually, no, let's do player, let's try it. What happens now? Yeah, nothing. Uh, player y plus player height. Uh, and let's do the same thing with this. Player height. Uh, oh, on the other side. Minus player height. And there we go. Can move off screen now. Cool. Uh, let's do the same thing, but for the top of the screen. So if player y equals zero then player y oh, I'm sorry it's more than zero less than zero then equals zero and that should stop it at the top of the screen perfect so now we can return the ball and um, we won't go off screen 
let's add now um, a way for the ball to return to the screen once if it goes off the screen. So let's add a ball reset function here. Let's create the function ball reset. And now let's say that if ball x is larger than 128 or ball x is smaller than 0. So if it goes off either side of the screen, uh, let's add the if, um, then ball x is going to equal 64 and ball y is going to equal 64 too and that will set it to the center of the screen so if we just let the ball fly off back to the center of the screen perfect and we can return it cool the one thing is that if it flies off if we miss the ball and then it might be kind of hard to actually catch it again um, so let's just fix that same function if we actually set the dx to be um, to reverse it to equal its negative so that will if I miss the ball that will send the ball to uh, the opponent side so it gives the player a little bit more time to actually react uh, to catch the ball again if I miss it yeah I think that works a little bit better cool we almost have it uh, let's add the score so let's make uh, two variables player score equals zero and opponent score equals zero and let's draw that so let's use print and let's print um, player score at uh, I don't know say 60 and then top of the screen what does that look like okay cool we got a zero up there Let's do the same for the opponent's score. So O score, let's say 62, and then same height. I guess we can add the collar as well. It's white, so it doesn't really matter. Uh, okay, they're right next to each other. I want to add a um, like a hyphen in the middle, anyways. So. We can use a uh, rectangle fill and then we we'll set it to, let's set it to 62 and 2 and maybe 2 pixels um, wide and then another 2. What does that look like? I uh, guess it won't show because of the other, they're too close to each other. Okay, let's move this to 6. And let's move this to 58. Okay, that looks pretty good. It's too high up. Let's bring it down a little bit. Let's change the Y values to four. Yeah, that looks pretty good. We got the score on screen. Obviously it's not doing anything. So let's, let's add that. Let's add another tab. Score and create a function uh, function player score and uh, let's add it before I forget player score and let's add the other one um, opponent score cool um, player score so what do we want to do if the player misses the ball? So if ball x is less than zero, 
then player score uh, increases by one. Uh, attempt to call opponent. Yeah, this doesn't exist. Let's remove it. Never mind. Okay, so if I miss the ball, nothing happens. Let's go to score. Let's change this to one. And if it goes off, there we go. Yeah, one works. It's past the X of the palette, so that's fine. And you can see that every time that I miss, then the score goes up by one. So let's say now that if the score uh, reaches, I don't know, three or five or whatever, we wanna call a game over. So let's add another variable here, call it G over and set it to false. Um, and if we go into score and then say function game over uh, end. and let's add it to the update game over. So if either score, so if player score equals five or the opponent score uh, equals five, then let's set the G over to true. And now if that happens, we want to display a message saying game over. So if G over uh, then we'll print a message saying game over. And let's set it to 50-50. And we'll say another message, uh, press X to restart. And we'll set that to 30, 60, maybe. Um, let's, let's change this to one just to test it uh, so we don't have to wait so long. Cool. So there we go. Um, we got the game over and restart message on the screen. Obviously the game keeps going. So let's um, fix that and nothing happens if I press X. So let's add that. Uh, let's add a function that uh, restarts the game. Game restart. And we'll say that if button press uh, X, then something happens but before that we want to add another um, another if statement so if uh, g over is true then now this happens So what happens? Uh, we just want the game to restart. So I guess we can we can just call in it. Let's see if we miss the ball, and then that happens, and then we call X. Uh, nothing happens. Okay, and that's because I didn't include it in the update, just like I said before every time uh, game restart and let's see now cool X and the game restarts the only thing now is that the ball uh, keeps moving so let's fix that let's go into here if this happens if the game over if the score hits uh, well one or five or whatever 
uh, game over true ball x equals 64 ball y equals 64 and ball dx equals 0 and ball dy equals 0. So this should set the ball to the middle of the screen. Yep. Uh, another problem is that we have the ball in the middle of the screen. So let's set it off the screen. I don't know if this is the best way to do it, but it should work. Yep. Uh, that does it. Cool. And if we press X, yeah, we restart the game. Uh, and that should do it. Let's change the score now to five. One thing is that I did add the um, opponent score value here. Obviously, the way that um, I coded it, you wouldn't be able to uh, score anything against the opponent because it will always be following the um, ball's Y value. Um, I may revisit this later on, I guess. I don't know how to do it now. So if any of you guys know how to do that, just feel free to leave a comment. Uh, for now, that does it. Pong and Pico 8. Let me know what you guys think. Let me know if uh, you got any comments, uh, any things that I can improve. And thanks for watching.